Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, public safety, uh, public benefits beyond safety, two pillars of what we're hearing about the importance of AM radio. Uh, Top-down mandates are not, I believe, the way to approach this issue, but it's important that we properly identify uh, what AM radio means for our constituents and the impact that uh, its removal from vehicles would have. Um, I think the fact that AM is free is something that ought to cause all of us to sit up, sit up and take notice. And thank you uh, to the panel. Thank you for uh, dealing with our concerns, our ideas, and questions today. Um, the free service that AM offers requires no internet connection, reaches parts of the country, and people that streaming and other services cannot for various reasons. Um, this is how people in rural areas like my district uh, get their news. They connect with their religion. They raise money for local causes. They take part in diverse conversations that they might not otherwise have access to. Uh, Mr. Chapman, over half of all people only listen to radio in the car. I listen in the shower as well. We'll leave it there. Additionally, AM, FM radio is still the top listened to media in cars over, over both streaming and satellite services combined. Uh, not all automakers have plans to eliminate AM receivers, and thank you to Ford, I think, for listening, and I hope they will continue to listen to that and expand the whole network of free radio by doing so. How could the rhetoric around removal impact investment in and availability of AM radio programs? Congressman, could you repeat that very last part of your question, please? Uh, I was asking how the continued rhetoric around removal of AM uh, impact investment and avail availability? So, uh, you know, as, as far as the, Congressman, thank you for the question, as far as the view or the rhetoric, um, uh, you know, it obviously uh, would look, you know, for anybody uh, wanting to invest in our sector, question what's going on. But I, th I think the bigger question for us is, as an industry right now is, how do we make sure that we can connect with people at all times who want to receive us? Um, and we know um, that we do the best when we are uh, received over the air uh, through the channels that are easiest for people to receive it. So, um, you know, uh, we've made a concerted effort to be available everywhere uh, for uh, people so they can consume our product. But the vast majority of listening that occurs to radio stations is where it's broadcast free and over the air. Yeah, and that's an investment option that ought to be trumpeted. Um, uh, Mr. Chapman, um, Michigan has a rich AM history. In fact, the first commercial radio station in the country started here, or started there. I guess I'm always living in Michigan. Our AM stations cover things important to Michiganders, uh, whether it's a fundraiser for the local Salvation Army, uh, or minute-by-minute minute updates on flooding in the state, or now wildfires up in, in the northern reaches of our state. Uh, there's been a trend towards uh, media con consolidation for decades, making news less local. That wouldn't work in Crawford County right now with the fires if we weren't local. What is the AM radio's role in local news and keeping people in rural areas informed? Congressman, we have made significant investments uh, in our news operation. I'll touch on those in a second. We started our company uh, on the premise that locally owned and uh, locally managed radio uh, where we operate is the right way to serve the community. Um, that is our business model. Um, we know that we need to continue to invest in our news. We've uh, upped the staff in that. Um, we operate in small communities, and we also operate in rural areas. So the news aspect and the information aspect that we provide to the community is an important part of our service. That's why many of the people in our organization come to work every day. They see that as a role to serve the community. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Schmidt, uh, how much does it cost to include an AM radio receiver in a newer electric vehicle? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't have cost information that is specific to vehicle manufacturers and is also is very specific to the vehicle design. I can say there's probably a range um, because some of the issues with interference may be more and more or less 
uh, prevalent, but I don't have any specific cost information. Sorry. That leaves us at a loss as well, because we don't understand it. So thank you. I yield back.